So Sonic has adopted this style wholeheartedly, basing the Planet Wisp, Rise of the Wisp cartoon show on this style. Sonic Channel has been slowly filth feeding us um, art that has been going crazy, crazy well based on this style. It is an art style by Karasuno, uh, as you can see in the corner here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> she's part of Sonic Team. If you look at her Twitter, she has this style. And it's like basic, lineless, crayon esque. It looks awesome. It's so vivid. It's so simple, yet so effective. It is the sweet spot, is what we're looking for. It's like archy, but less complex, but equally as bombastic and interesting. So I want to break down the style because we're going to be doing a whole series on this exact style. And we're going to look at the colors today because that is something that I have been very interested in. So we have a picture of Sonic and Tails. Now I want to notice a few things. Okay, First of all, there's only one shadow. There's not like several different shadows or shadows inside of shadows. Okay. Notice that. Okay. The underside of the shoe. Now, when there are dark, when there are shadows inside of the shadow, it is only for the shape, only to maintain the shape. Because right now, this is all lineless art, so to speak. There's a line here, okay, and here. There's a shadow inside of there, but I mean, you can see. Okay. Technically, that's a shadow inside of a shadow, but all it does is it's just to maintain the shape. Just to maintain, like, these simple, simple shapes. Um, it's used so sparingly. <laughs> it's just, it's so cool. So, you sometimes break the first rule that I just said but it is only to preserve the overall shape now being able to understand what shapes to preserve is very tricky and to be honest I'm not that great at it I don't know like like look at this they added this line here to represent like the inside of Tails's muzzle and they kind of turn this into like shading on the bottom like the bottom um, whisker, or whatever that's called. Okay, so you have to you have to be able to understand when to use the shadows to complement and enhance and add details, important but very subtle and simple details to the drawing. Okay, that's highly important. Next these white lines here are used they're like this shiny glowing almost like a lightsaber um, white with like a glow on the outside and it gives it this this consistency that really pops really like draws your eye in and like wow these characters are so shiny there's a lot of I forget what the word is <sighs> when you have light like that hitting you um, but it's that except it will always be white and it will always be the brightest form of white that's in like white like on the paper and if they use that because they use that white any other whites for example the eyes um, the gloves okay any part of tails his eyes his gloves they will use a darker white so that's the white that they use and then this is the white that they use for the for the highlights okay you can see there's a difference between the two okay another thing I want to point out about this art style it involves like a blur oh, not a blur a glow a uh, to replicate this glow you see that glow coming off the white that i talked about but also it's like a it's like a very quiet gradient a very quiet 
um, airbrush. That's the one. And you can notice it here. Notice what the color of this spike is, and then notice what color the spike is here. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Two vastly different colors, but you wouldn't even notice it just by looking at it. You'd think they're relatively the same. Okay, this kind of white gradient is used all over the piece. Um, if we get tails here, that part there, and then the part on his tail. Okay, another example, two different colors. So in order to replicate that, you need to grab the airbrush, okay? I would recommend getting the, once you, when you have the base color, if you can, go up a few steps, okay? Just, you don't need this tool specifically, but just give, make it a little, a little brighter. And I can't get back the color wheel, there we go. Just make it a little brighter. Keep it as vivid as possible. Don't use any gray, okay? Or I'll personally beat you. Okay, see that? It's the same kind of color that's used. So let's actually try and replicate this on screen. So if those are the two colors that he used. Okay, we're going from that. We'll use the approximate color. We'll move it up a couple. Let's see if we can get close. Nope. So it's actually going to be even brighter, so across, and more yellow. Okay. Yeah, so it is a tricky color to replicate. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it on just the color wheel. So... Obviously, part of this you want to go, instead of just keeping the color that you're on, we'll shift it a little bit, we'll move it over towards the yellow, because so that's, that's a brighter color, and I guess we'll just, we'll keep it bright, but also um, increase the, the lightness. Okay, ooh, that's pretty close. Okay, let's see if we can do the same. Yeah, that's pretty close. So something like that. Let's see if we can do the same with Sonic. Okay, we'll say this, this spot here. We'll remove this. Okay, that's his base color. And if that's his bright color. Let's see if we can get there. Okay, so we move to the blue, the lighter blue. Something like that. Okay, a little too blue. Okay, not bad. Alright, so maybe I moved a little too far. Yeah, it's pretty close. I wouldn't fault it. Um and you you can always use yeah, that's it. Play around with it. You can always use this is just so you can use it on your fan characters. So if your fan character is this color green, um, and you want to replicate that, you would move it towards one of either the left or the right. So in this case, we'll make it more blue, like that, and then we'll move it a little closer. And so the light color should look something like that. You might even want to make it, yeah, something like that. That, was, that would be the color green you would use. You can base off this, you can go through the references and base it all off of the actual official characters because they've pretty much drawn every single official character and added the colors. Okay, so remember that. Okay. <clears throat> um, but that's essentially it for these effects. So remember, we've got the airbrush. Okay. Little airbrush. Um, and they use like really bright blues and things like that okay <clears throat> and you want to use these whites save the save the whites 
for the, those lines, you want to use those inner darker colors, okay? So it's like if you get the dark color, you know, and you say so you draw, let's say there's you know, like a cuff. And you would use the you would use a darker version or even you know just go a little darker. But we'll keep it keep it like that. Okay, and that just kind of shows like the creases of the cuff. <laughs> Forgive how that doesn't look like a cuff, but I think you get the point. And then uh, when choosing that that brighter gradient, you know, that kind of slides from one side over to the other. You want to adjust it on the color wheel and adjust it, make it vivid yet also um, vivid and bright. And that's it. Keep it simple. We're we'll breaking down the next part. We'll start to work on the anatomy of the characters. Um, then we'll go over the, the hands, getting the right tools, what kind of brushes you need to use, all that jazz. See you in the next one.